you probably think of Vaporeon as a primarily defensive Pokemon. It was definitely designed that way, with its massive HP stat, utility move pool, and the defensively oriented ability, Water Absorb. But in Gen 3 OU, Vaporeon is for the most part outclassed by other bulky water types in the format. A defensive Vaporeon can sometimes fit as a wish support Pokemon with water immunity, which helps out against Suicune. But on most teams, Milotic or Suicune will be superior. Because of this, Vaporeon had to find a new area where it could thrive. And with some experimentation, players realized that Vaporeon could actually operate as an excellent lead on hyper offense teams. Let's take a look at how Vaporeon redefined its identity in Gen 3 and became a unique enabler for fast paced strategies. But first, a good update. Since his arrival in the real world, Iron Mugulus has discovered the wonders of nature. He's never seen anything like this before. Get your own Iron Mugulus at jimothycool.com, currently available in the US, Australia, and New Zealand. Hyper-offensive Spikes teams in Gen 3 often sacrifice a solid defensive core for proactive threats that keep momentum up and try to end games quickly. These teams aim to stack Spikes on the field as early as they can and constantly be applying pressure. These teams can very easily fall apart if the enemy manages to weather the storm and stabilize against their offense, and sometimes that can happen as early as turn 1. Smeagol is a common aggressive spike setter in Gen 3. Since Smeagol can learn any move in the game, it has the useful combination of Spore, Spikes, and Explosion, which generate free turns to create spikes and allow you to prevent the enemy from acting. This is an aggressive opener that can cause a chain reaction that carries you to victory in the right situations. But Smeagol has pretty inconsistent lead matchups. The common mixed Salamence lead can simply outspeed and threaten to KO Smeagol with Brick Break. Being forced out on turn 1, is terrible for a team without a strong defensive core, and without your disruptive spore or early spikes, your team can quickly fall apart. Zapdos can simply substitute against Smeagol to dodge the spore and go for a safe two-hit KO. Smeagol can at least set up some spikes, but Zapdos behind that safe substitute can get even further value and put you in a rough position. If leads like Tyranitar or Metagross happen to be carrying a Lumberry, they can easily counteract spore and just KO Smeagol back, leaving you one Pokemon down with no spikes on the field already in shambles. On paper, Smeagol may seem like a great aggressive lead, but in practice it's quite inconsistent. The importance of those early turns for aggressive teams can make the whole archetype inconsistent if you happen to get a bad lead matchup that puts you behind. And that's why Vaporeon is such a good fit on these teams. I don't know who exactly pioneered this Vaporeon set, but I first saw it used by the player Eden, who shared it in a sample team. This set has a positive lead matchup against pretty much every common lead in the game. That includes Tyranitar, Metagross, Salamence, Skarmory, and even Zapdos. With some speed and special attack investment, it's easy to see how you'd match up well against Tyranitar. You can directly outrun and threaten it, forcing them out and earning yourself early momentum. What's great about Vaporeon's massive base HP stat is that with very little investment, you're able to make 101 health substitutes. Since Seismic Toss only deals 100 damage, this means you can safely batten past that substitute to any teammate, and it won't be broken by a Blissey's Seismic Toss. This is very valuable, especially on a special threat like Vaporeon that can lure in Blissey. When you're forcing out that Tyranitar on turn 1, you can choose to go for a substitute. Worst case scenario, you scout their Tyranitar set, and in many situations you'll invite in a Blissey, batten pass to a teammate, withstand their Seismic Toss, and now you're in an incredible position. Salamence is also likely to switch out against a turn 1 Vaporeon, since it's threatened by Ice Beam. Metagross and Skarmory might be scared to take a big neutral Hydro Pump too and probably switch out. So this substitute play can come in handy a lot as you force out these common leads. It might seem weird to say that Vaporeon can beat a Zapdos lead, but it actually can. With only 16 EVs in HP and 12 in special defense, Vaporeon is able to barely live a modest Thunderbolt from max special attack Zapdos. And this Vaporeon set is using a Salakberry. If you just Ice Beam in the face of Zapdos on turn one, you'll survive their Thunderbolt, deal well over half of their health, and then eat your Salakberry. Now you've got a speed boost meaning you're faster than them, and threatening to KO with another Ice Beam. What's beautiful about this situation is that Vaporeon also has access to Baton Pass. If the enemy wants to save their Zapdos, which they often will, you can go for a Baton Pass, not only pivoting and responding to their switch out, but also passing on that speed boost from the berry and keeping your momentum up. This Vaporeon Smeagol Hyper Offense team by Eden has some great recipients for the speed boost. Smeagol is an obvious choice, as with a speed boost it can outrun and put anything to 
sleep, then establish spikes, or even go for a thunder wave on the predicted switch out, putting you even further ahead. With spikes on the field, an enemy asleep, and even explosion to deal a bit of damage on the way out while pivoting to a powerful threat like Aerodactyl, you are in complete control of the game. While a Smeargle lead is very all in on getting a good turn one matchup to establish that ever important early game momentum, Vaporeon has fantastic lead matchups and synergizes perfectly with Smeargle, granting it even more safe opportunities to get those spore and spikes going. Tyranitar is also a great recipient of that speed boost. This team by Eden is using a much slower and bulkier Tyranitar than you would expect. This is because when it receives the speed boost from Vaporeon, that bulk allows it another free turn to Dragon Dance against a lot more Pokemon. And with two speed boosts, it's fast enough to start applying a lot of pressure. This set also benefits from receiving substitutes from a Baton Passing Vaporeon. With a lot of HP investment and a little bit of special defense, you can even live Hydro Pumps from offensive water types like Stami, Suicune, and Swampert. This is a classic rock spam team that aims to overwhelm enemy rock resists by luring them in repeatedly and racking up damage with spikes and strong neutral hits. Eventually their rock resist will fall, enabling either Tyranitar or Aerodactyl to clean up the game. While this is an inherently aggressive team style, this particular team is even more all in on this plan, with a hidden power grass mixed Metagross as an additional way to lure in Swampert and catch it by surprise. A downside to using Vaporeon for this is that it is basically sacrificing a team slot for early game momentum. This aggressive Vaporeon lead will not stick around for long, and you'll need to get as much value out of it as you can to get your foot in the door and keep pressure up for the remainder of the game. Aggressive teams like this have a reputation for being simple and easy ways to play, but in Gen 3 OU, I think teams like this are some of the most difficult of all. When you're using an all or nothing team like this, a single mistake can spell disaster. With no defensive core to fall back on and offer some breathing room, every single turn can counts. The inaccuracy of Hydro Pump feels a lot more pronounced on this set too, than it usually does. While a defensive Pokemon like Swampert can afford to miss the occasional Hydro Pump, since missing won't usually result in fainting, that's different for this Vaporeon. Missing out on that crucial damage or early KO could lose you the whole game. Most players won't risk losing their Tyranitar in turn 1 to gamble on the miss chance, but it's still a concern. This hyper offense Vaporeon set has become quite well known in Gen 3 OU, and is a hallmark of the archetype. If you see Vaporeon Lead, you'll probably expect this and try to play accordingly, but I think we should all appreciate the brilliance of this set and how it solved so many unique problems for the hyper offense archetype. When I talk about the beauty of this metagame and the amazing innovations that can surface when you have a reasonable power level and a healthy level of centralization, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This reinvention of Vaporeon is one of the coolest developments I've seen in this tier. I remember first using this set and being amazed at how it had a plan against pretty much every common lead. This Eden team is one of my favorites to use when casually laddering. Try it out if you enjoy a more aggressive playstyle. But be warned, this is a difficult team to use effectively. Thank you to the patrons for your continued support. And thank you as well to everyone who has donated to my Gen 3 OU tournament, ADV Revival. Oh, hey, oh my, one hit. It's scattered spikes.